Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI, where copious amounts of alcohol have been consumed since last time, where we had some fun and games at the Coliseum. Go to the Coliseum, he says. It will be fun, he says. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, game. Anyways, before we go to Daryl's tomb and get our hands on a new airship, I thought I'd take a few seconds to explore the town of Cullingan, because we haven't done that yet. Who knows, we might get some information on where more of our friends are. Or where apparently a mean guy is at the Coliseum and he's looking for a striker. Well, we haven't found that weapon yet, but when we do, we're going to want to hang on to that so we can recruit somebody later on. In the Game Boy Advance version and the iPhone version, I believe it's called the Ichigeki. Oh, that sounds like Cyan. Is he still in the area? Let's find out. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, in the last video, in the battle against the Cactuar, or Cactrot, if you're playing on the Game Boy Advance or iPhone version, where Physical Evade actually works, make sure you equip the Sniper Sight Relic. That way you can actually hit the damn thing, because what the Cactrot does, or Cactuar, depending on your translation, is they have a move called Mind Sting, which will berserk your character, and they rely on their really ridiculously high physical evade to avoid damage and then they'll just spam blowfish over and over and over or 1000 needles as it's also known as so yeah if you're doing that make sure you have the sniper sight so you can actually hit them and win the battle i mentioned it in the video description but i forgot to actually say it so keep that in mind fable treasure of is that like love? True love? No. That's, although that is the greatest treasure in all the land, that's not what Locke is looking for. Or is it? Okay, so that's all I want to do here. Since last time, I have already rested up at the inn and adjusted my equipment setup for Daryl's Tomb. And I'll go over that when we get there. If you don't remember quite where it is, it is just a little bit southwest of the village here. Now you notice there that even though I input a command for both Sabbath and Setzer before I used the jump command with Edgar, Edgar took his turn first. That's because the jump command will always take priority over anything else, whether it's a spell, special ability, a physical attack, whatever. So if you're going to be using the jump command with a character and you're in the process of maybe healing or trying to get your buffs set up, uh, keep that in mind, that you might want to keep them on the ground for a little bit. Now this enemy here, Moose, uh, they can cast the Pep Up Blue Magic spell for Strago. So if you didn't learn it earlier by the method I showed you guys, uh, you can learn it here from those guys when you get Strago back. I like this music. It's a little creepy, a little eerie, but... At the same time, it's fitting, you know? It's pretty atmospheric for a tomb. By the way, guess what kind of monsters we'll be running into in the tomb? Yeah, a lot of undead monsters. Surprise! So because of that, I have Sabin with a Fire Knuckle and damage-boosting relics. Nothing special there. Same with Celis. Celis. Blech. We got earrings and the enhancer to boost her magic damage. Now between her and Edgar, I gave them both the experience eggs because they're a little bit behind on magic and strength respectively. So I want to try to level them up as quickly as I can without grinding and get them caught up to say Terra, Shadow, Sabin, you know, the, the heavy hitters. And I also have Edgar with the pearl lands because a lot of the enemies here are weak to pearl. Setzer, nothing special because he sucks, just Genji Glove and two darts. Now, you don't want to give him the Trump weapons because they have that instant death attack. And that'll be rather ineffective here. So, first things first, we want to run into a rare monster here that we can only meet up with in the first room. Why the programmers are so fond of doing that in this game, I don't know. But, yeah, the Osteosaur, you can only meet up with them here. And he's a pretty good rage for Gaw. 
um, a lot of instant death attacks that Gaw can take advantage of. So you want to make sure you run into him at least once. Alright, uh, let's see. First things first. Yeah, let's go to the right. Nice change of pace in today's video. I'm going to do a little bit of... Oh, what's it called? Dungeon crawling. There we go. <laughs> I couldn't think of the term there for the life of me. Like, uh... Yeah, I'm a little tired. Recording after work might not be the best option for me when I'm trying to enunciate myself, formulate sentences, and put thoughts into words, and things like that. Anyways, those guys, very easy. Go with uh, fire or holy. They, they can also turn you into zombies, I believe. And they can use a move called Virite, which will poison your whole party. So if you're worried about those uh, equip ribbons, you'll be fine. Although I prefer the DPS route. Just kill them before they do anything. <laughs> now you got a secret switch on that tombstone, which is pretty easy to miss. Uh-oh, we got Mad Oscars here, also known as Malboros in other Final Fantasy games. Luckily, in this one, they're pretty timid compared to their cousins, and yeah, they don't just... Uh, well, you'll see. They have a special ability where your characters are in the front row for no reason. But they have a special move called Sour Mouth, or Bad Mouth, as it's also known as. Which, luckily in this game, it only hits one person as opposed to your whole party, but it'll hit your party with, like, pretty much every bad status ailment in the game. It is ridiculously annoying. Unlike the Genji helmet, which is ridiculously powerful. The most powerful piece of headgear in the game, as far as raw defense goes. And this goes back to what I was talking about with the Regal Crown earlier. Even though Sabin can wear the Genji helmet, he loses out on stat bonuses. So I like to give that to other characters, and we'll just pass down stuff to people who need it. But yeah, we'll be making a return trip here to learn that attack. Oh, hey. Okay guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, my roommate came home uh, earlier than expected from her LASIK surgery, so I took a few minutes to help her get situated. And Make sure everything's okay with that, so, um, yeah, we're back now. Although I completely forgot what I was talking about before that, um... Uh, oh, yeah, it was about those, um, oh, what are they called? Mad Oscars, or Malbros. Uh, yeah, remember that you can fight them here, because when we get Strago back, well, we can come back and learn that Sour Mouth Blue Magic spell. Not that it's super useful, but it can be. But speaking of LASIK, um, yeah, th that's something I might consider in the future because um, I do wear glasses when seen at a distance. Um, by the way, this switch here, if you hit it, the water raises. However, the switch on the right is now underwater, so we don't want to do that quite yet. So things like dr uh, driving, watching TV, playing games, you know, anything at a distance I have to, or I'm supposed to, wear my glasses for. But my last eye exam was about three and a half years ago, <laughs> and my vision was something really off the wall, like 2200. Um, yeah, go with stigmatism. Hooray! So I'm thinking that by now, when I go back, which I am planning on doing in the near future, I'm pretty sure the eye doctor is going to want me to wear my glasses full time, which, I don't know, it, it's not something I'm, I'm comfortable with doing, uh, working where I work. There's just a couple of risks involved that I, I don't know, it's really not a big risk, it's just, I don't know, I mean, LASIK seems pretty cool. Um, I mean, it, it, it works, and it does have its, you know, its ups and its downs, but uh, she seems really happy, and the results are definitely definitive. Of course, that's if I um, qualify for LASIK. I know everyone is different. But it is something I might look into in the future. If any of you guys have had LASIK, uh, let me know. I, I'd love to hear about your experiences with it. Yeah, look at that damage. 4,000. Go, Edgar. 
So yeah, I'm gonna I'm only gonna do one episode today because I kinda wanna be available or on hand to help out if she needs it. Um, cause I guess you're supposed to kinda take it easy on your eyes for a couple hours after the surgery, which makes sense. But I think we can get through this tomb today. No big deal. Oh, you're dead. Yeah, we're gonna cure that. Come on, Edgar. Take oh, there's that attack I was talking about. Let's see who gets raped by tentacles. Oh, sensor. Yeah, you got hit with poison, sleep, imp, who knows what else. It's a really nasty attack. And darkness. <laughs> wow. Well, it's a good thing we have remedies. Yeah, you can imagine how annoying that is in other Final Fantasy games where they hit your entire party with it at once. Now, this room here is a puzzle. And if you come here before examining those other four tombstones in the other room, uh, you don't get the option to carve something. Uh, you just say something like, oh, I can't think of anything, and that's it. So before you come here, go to the other room and look at each of the tombstones. And if you notice, the letters are kind of jumbled up. They don't make a whole lot of sense. But what you want to do is, if you look at them closely, they, they kind of spell something out backwards. But what you want to do is spell it out in your mind the right way. So we're going to do this one first, followed by the first choice, and then the last choice. And you'll notice it spells out the world is square. And we get the game over music. Nice touch game. You know, we got to get that despair to sink in nice and deep. Oh, and apparently there's a hidden treasure in this tomb. Yeah, this is where you get the one and only experience egg in the game, outside of the Coliseum. I'm trying to think of a line from Indiana Jones, but... Hmm, can't quite think of a good one. Yeah, those Mad Oscars, not too weak against Holy. You want to use fire against them. This is a nice change of pace, though. We haven't done some good old-fashioned dungeon crawling in quite a while. Here we get a crystal mail. Awesome. Pretty good piece of heavy armor. But speaking of dungeon crawling, um... My 30-day free trial of WoW ends in about a week and a half. And here we get his arena gown, which no one in the party can wear. And I'm not too sure I'm going to actually subscribe to the game. Um, I just don't see what all the hype is about. The game feels like more of the same. You know, it's not really breaking the mold or anything like that. And I know, you know, early game and mid game is hardly indicative what gameplay is like when you reach max level, but I'm just not feeling it for some reason. I don't know, maybe I'm jaded in my old age, and MMOs right now are kind of stale. You know, there's nothing new and exciting. So, something game-breaking needs to come out and really take the market by storm again. So, maybe I'll just stick to my console games until a really good MMO comes out. But, we'll see. I still have, like, I think there's a week and a half left, so... You know, I'll keep playing it in the meantime. Keep running my dungeons. We'll, we'll see what happens at the end. But yeah, that's Arena Gown. It seems like it's a really out-of-place item for the game to put there. I mean, no one in our party can wear it. But, I mean, it's there. Um, but speaking of armor that nobody can wear, uh, the 
Tabby suit and Chocobo suit. I mentioned last time that you want to hang on to for Auntie. Um, it is possible that I could have bet those at the Coliseum right now and eventually win a Genji armor. Uh, you just keep betting the item win over and over again, and eventually the series will allow you to win a Genji armor. However, somewhere along those series of battles, you'll, you'll have to fight a monster called Veteran, and they have even more instant death attacks than the Outsider or Retainer do combined. And I don't have anyone in my party that can equip the Memento Ring, which protects against instant death. So, the Genji armor, while it is possible, it's just a little bit out of reach for right now. Um, so I'm going to hold off on that until later, until we either get a character that can use the Memento Ring, or we get another item that protects against instant death. But make sure you do hang on to those two pieces of armor, if you do indeed plan on using the Colosseum to get more Genji armors. And I, I recommend that you do, it's a very good piece of armor. Besides, they only sell for one gold anyways. So you may as well just hang on to them. And again, I didn't mention that last time because it really wasn't relevant because I wasn't going to be going after it at that point. So there you are. Uh-oh, we got a save point in the dungeon. You know what that means. We got a boss coming up. We do. Oh, I should have killed that flower first. Well, hopefully Edgar will land on that flower. Or we can just throw some darts at it. That works too. Hey, an amulet. Alright, that'll protect you against zombie if you don't want to use ribbons. Now, let's open up this box on the right first for a man-eater. It's a pretty good weapon. A uh, few characters can wear it. Um, gives you 10% magic block, which is pretty good. It's stronger than the darts. And it also does double damage against humanoid monsters, which is pretty useful against uh, some Colosseum battles. Now, before we open that one, I want to take a minute to use a tent here and save my game, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, took care of that healing and saving off screen. And I also equipped everybody with Marvel shoes, because we have a boss coming up, and I'm a huge fan of the Marvel shoes for boss fights for a couple of reasons. But first of all, if you don't know where I got the Marvel Shoes, you can get them from the Colosseum. And if you want to know how to do that exactly, watch the previous episode where I demonstrate that. Um, now, the thing about the Marvel Shoes is they give you Auto Haste, Auto Protect, which will cut your physical damage in half, Auto Shell, which, which cuts magic damage in half, and Auto Regen, which periodically heals you throughout the battle. Now, as good as those status effects are by themselves, they have a few added bonuses as well. Uh, the first of which being, as long as you have auto haste, you are immune to slow, and I believe stop as well. I need to test that for certain, but I'm pretty sure it makes you immune to stop. And having auto regen makes poison and seizure non-issues because the game uses the same damage calculations for both poison and regen, and they both tick on the same timer. So essentially, if you have poison and regen, you'll get hit for, say, oh, 44 damage, and then you'll immediately be healed for 44 damage. So, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to worry about poison either. Now, the other, other added bonus of having auto buffs is that they're permanent. They have an infinite duration. Unlike buffing with spells or summoning espers, which can wear off in the middle of a battle, if you have a relic equipped with an auto-buffing feature, you never lose that status. And yet another reason why I'm a huge fan of the Marvel Shoes is because I don't like to waste time healing or buffing. As soon as the boss fight starts, you know, I like to start DPSing right away. So with all that said and done, um, you know what, I'm actually going to do a save state here because I want to show you guys something special about this boss. With boss time against the presenter himself. Now as you can tell by what this guy looks like, you want to fight him the exact same way you fought the Welk in the very beginning of the game. You know, attack the head and ignore the shell. 
and he is weak to fire. But you don't want to go balls to the wall. Yeah, you can kill him with instant death. <laughs> uh, that kind of spoils what I wanted to show you guys. Well, no it doesn't. Uh, chainsaw could also work as well. Now, for defeating him, we get the Almighty Dragon Claw, the second most powerful weapon in the game for Sabin. So, let's take a look at that real quick. It is wholly elemental, and it also boosts his strength and magic power a little bit. But, what if you're like me, and you're greedy, and you wanted to have two Dragon Claws? Ah, ah, ah. Well, very little known fact about this boss is you can use X-Zone to target the shell and the head simultaneously, and if it works on both, like it just did not, <laughs> I've never seen that before. Wow, that's an interesting game. I guess you could say he just got shell shocked. Okay, well that's not what I wanted to show you guys, so we're going to try this again. Third time's the charm. And if it doesn't work this time, I will just <laughs> reload my game and try again. But essentially, what you can do is use X-Zone, and if you kill the shell and the head at the same time, you actually get two Dragon Claws. There we go! Yeah, much better. Now, it's arguable which is a better setup for Sabin, a Hero's Ring or a Genji Glove with two Dragon Claws, because that would give you Strength plus four, Magic plus two. Um, but either way, um, it's a pretty good setup for him, having two Pearl Elemental weapons, because, well, a lot of enemies in the Colosseum are weak to Pearl, so you can use Sabin as a Wrecking Machine there with two Dragon Claws. I believe that's the only way in the game to acquire a second one without having to lose a really powerful item in the process of gaining a Dragon Claw. But, anyways, that's all I want to do for this episode. So I'm going to save my game here, and when we come back next time, we'll continue through Daryl's Tomb and see if we can't find uh, that airship sensor mentioned. Also, by the way, make sure that your character's levels are not divisible by the ones digit in your gold. In this case, it's a 2, and Celis is level 34, is divisible by 2, so she's going to be susceptible to something in the near future. I know that sounds like the most random, off-the-wall, crazy strategy, but take my word for it, viewers. It's not critical that you make that happen, but it would make your life a lot easier. But anyways, enough of that. When we come back next time, we'll continue on. So, like always, thank you for watching. Have a good day and take care.